Hi, this is Warren Kufeld from SAS, and I'm going to talk to you about creating and customizing the Kaplan-Meier survival plot. If you're a pharmaceutical or health sciences researcher, you're no doubt familiar with survival analysis and the Kaplan-Meier plot, which provides results from a survival analysis. In SAS stat software, this is our most popular plot. Certainly, if you define popularity as a graph that people want to change and modify the most, this is absolutely our most popular plot. Everybody who uses this graph wants to change it in some way. On the left, we see the graph that comes out of PROC Life Test by default. On the right, we see various customizations. We've changed the title. We've added a p-value. We've added um, Hall Wellner confidence bands. And we've added an at-risk table. So there are lots of things we can do to this plot. If this were any other graph in any other context, what I would tell you is access the program that controls how the graph is made. So every graph has a program called a template that provides all the instructions for making the graph. I would tell you, use PROC template, dump out the contents of the template, copy it, put it in your editor, modify it, submit it to SAS, and that's how you would modify the graph. But this graph is so important, it's so popular, we have another mechanism for this graph only. For this graph, we have a set of macros and macro variables that make it easy to modify the graph template. Now, before I go any further, I want to give credit where credit is due. Proc Life Test was designed and programmed by Ying So, my longtime colleague. I'm the guy who brought you the macros and the macro variables. This talk has three parts. Proc Life Test has options that make it easy to customize the graph. We also have the macros and macro variables. The macro variables in particular make it very easy to make certain changes. But very detailed customizations can be done by changing the macros. And just as we have style graph templates, we also have style templates. Style templates enable you to change colors, line styles, markers, fonts, the overall appearance of the graph. The options that I'm going to discuss are available in SAS STAT 12.1 software. When ODS Graphics is enabled, graphs come out by default. So here I've enabled ODS Graphics with the ODS Graphics on statement. I run PROC Life Test and a survival plot comes out. This is the default graph. Now let's look at some ways we can change the graph. There's a plots equals survival option, and within that option are options for controlling this graph. Here I've asked for Hall Wellner confidence bands to be added, and I've asked for a test statistic to test if these three profiles are homogeneous. And here's the p-value associated with that test. I can also ask for at-risk information to be displayed. And an at-risk table is added by default in the bottom of the graph. We see the different groups are labeled 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3 has been added to the legend. You may wonder why the actual values aren't here. By default, labels are displayed up to 12 characters. But the longest label here, AML high risk, is 13 characters. So if I want to see the labels, then I need to specify a maximum length of 13. And now I see the labels here. And the 1s, 2s, and 3s are gone from the legend. I can move the at-risk table outside. And the outside option does that. Here I'm reserving 15% of the vertical space for this table. I don't have to specify this option. Proc Life Test will pick a value but you can control how much space is available if you would like. There are many other options for template modification, but that's a few. Now let's go into macros. There is a macro that we provide called Survival Template Restore. It defines a number of macro variables, like we see up top, and a number of macros. So here we see some macro variables that define how the title is displayed. There are two versions of the title, one for the single stratum case and one for the multiple strata case. And there's text that is shared by both of them. 
There's a macro variable for Y options. There are many other macro variables. And there are macros, one for the single stratum case, one for the multiple strata case. The survival template restore macro provides all these macros and macro variables, and it calls the survival template macro, which compiles all the templates from all the macros and macro variables. Let's look at an example to make this clearer. Let's assume the macros are in a file called macros.sas. On the last slide, I'll show you where to get these macros from. The first thing we're going to do is call the survival template restore macro. It will provide all of the macros and macro variables. And now we need to extract just the parts we want to change. Here I want to change the title. I want to call it Kaplan Meyer plot. So I change title text zero to say Kaplan Meyer plot, and I remove the S that was here originally for survival estimates. And now I compile all the macros, the macro variables that were provided and the ones I changed. And that's going to make some compiled templates that have been modified from the original version. So now when I run proc life test, I will get the modified plot. And here's the graph. The title now says Kaplan Meyer plot. So as I mentioned, the way you do this with every other graph, every other context, is we dump out the context of the program. In this case, the template is 339 lines. It's big because there are four major pieces. There are actually two separate templates for this graph, one when the at-risk information is inside and one when it's outside. Each one has two blocks one for the single stratum case, one for the multiple strata case. So there are four blocks of code for making this. If you dump out all of that source, you're going to have to identify those four places to make a change or figure out which one of those places you want to make the change for the situation you're in. You're doing all of this without any real guidance. With the macro approach, the amount of code you have to work with is much smaller. You make one change, one place, it affects all four versions of the graph, and you're doing all of this with guidance. So it makes changing this template much easier. So let's see another example. Here is the original y-axis. The label is survival probability, and the ticks go from 0 to 1 by 0.2. Um, here is the macro variable that provides that information. It provides the label, the tick value list, and other things as well. So we can provide all the macros, all the macro variables. We can change just what we want to change. I'm going to change the label to survival. I'm going to change the tick value list to use an increment of 0.25. I'm going to compile the templates using all the macros and macro variables that were provided, plus the one I changed, run proc life test, and now I get a modified y-axis. Here, I'm specifying view min equals 0.2, and so now I'm starting the axis at 0.2 instead of the default of 0. But the procedure is always the same. Provide everything, change one small thing, compile, run the procedure. Most of the changes that you will ever want to make you can do with macro variables, but you can change macros as well. In this test statistic, it said log rank, and there was no space between log and rank, and there were no spaces on both sides of the equal sign. So here I'm just going to redefine this string to put some spaces in, just to change the appearance a little bit. Provide all the macros and macro variables, restore them to their default state, modify just the macro that I want to change, compile everything, run the procedure, and now I have this new formatting for this p-value statistic. When you're done, you should clean up. When you compile these templates, they're going to be stored in your SAS user library, which means they're going to persist across SAS sessions. So you should clean up when you're done, unless you really want these templates to be around for later sessions. And so there are two ways we can clean up. 
One is we can explicitly delete the two templates that we create, and we're going to delete them from the SAS user library. The other method is we can delete the entire SAS user library. So if we change other templates, style templates, graph templates, we can delete everything and restore it to the state that SAS provided using the second method that we see here. And finally, let's look at some style changes. The style we've been seeing up to this point is called HTML Blue, and it's an all-color style. So groups are differentiated only by color. If I want to use a style where these lines are differentiated by line type, I could use HTML Blue CML. CML stands for colors, markers, and lines. And so now I see different line styles. So I specify a style by using the style equals option on an ODS destination statement, such as HTML. The other option I illustrate here is DPI or dots per inch. I'm going to create this graph at 300 dots per inch, which makes a cleaner looking graph than the default of 100. It also makes a bigger graph. I can modify a style. There's a macro called mod style, which modifies the different groups. Here we have three different groups of observations. In the original style, the colors for the first groups were blue, red, and then green. I can change them to green, red, and then blue. In order to do this, I have to know exactly how the colors are defined. They're not a pure red, green, and blue. They're a mix, and these are color names in SAS. If you look at the paper that we'll, we'll see the URL for it later, you'll see how I found out what these colors were. But I can use the mod style macro to specify colors in a different order. And now I get blue up here where I had green down here. And I've swapped the green and the blue. So I'm creating a new style called my style. I specify it on an ODS destination statement, run the procedure, and I see the effect of my style change. In conclusion, there are three ways you can modify the Kaplan-Meier plot. Plots equals option provides some easy customization. Macro variable changes provide other easy customizations. But you can change the macros as well to take very detailed control over how this graph looks. And you can also go in and modify the styles. And when you're done, don't forget to clean up everything that you've done unless you really want the changes to persist to future SAS sessions. So all of this work is available on the web, all the examples I went through, and many more. The macros themselves are in the SAS stat sample library. The URL is here, and it's also in the paper. I gave a paper on this at SAS Global Forum this year. Here is the URL for the paper. There's a lot of detailed information in that paper. But the graphs are small. Um, in order to fit in the 20-page limit, I made all of the graphs one quarter size. If you would like to see this same information, but with larger graphs, here's an alternative version of the paper. Thank you. Thank you for listening.